G'day guys, my name's Dave Tran and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And in this lesson, I'll be teaching you how to play an acoustic version of Love of My Life by Queen. Now, the arrangement I'm going to show you is loosely based around their live version that they did in Montreal in 1981. You can find a link to that in the description below. Now, Brian May actually plays this on a 12 string guitar, so he gets a lot of those high chimey notes. But most of you won't have a 12 string, I don't have a 12 string either. But the arrangement I'll show you will still get those high notes and will sound quite similar to his version. Now for the basics of this song you'll need your guitar and standard tuning and you won't need a capo. Now if you want to master your chords back to front then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium which is my complete step by step guitar course. Now the guitar I'm playing here today is a Cold Clark Fat Lady 2 with Elixir strings. If you want to find out more, there's a link in the description below. So anyway, let's jump into it. And for our finger picking basics, our thumb will take care of the sixth, fifth and fourth strings. And our index, middle and ring finger will pluck the third, second and first strings respectively. And they shouldn't pluck any other strings other than the ones they've been assigned to. There are a couple of exceptions to that, but I'll get to that later. And this is my recommended finger picking rules. Brian May actually uses his pinky to finger pick this song, but for us mere mortals, let's just stick to these three fingers and our thumb. All right, let's start with the intro and there's two lines of tab here. We'll start with a D chord, but we're going to play it with our index finger barring the second fret across the first, second and third strings and your middle finger will go on the 3rd fret of the 2nd string. You're going to pinch the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings together, and then lift your middle finger, hit that 2nd fret, then middle finger comes back down, hit that, and then end on the 1st string. So all together. And then there's an optional ghost note here. You don't need to play it, but it is what he does in the live recording. Sometimes he leaves it out. But you'll take your pinky finger and you'll hit the 4th fret of the 5th string. So all together for the 1st bar. And then for our next bar we're going to go to a B minor chord shape. Now we're going to do a very similar thing. It's almost identical to that 1st bar except our bass note now is the 5th string here with this B minor. So we're going to pluck the exact same strings and lift our middle finger as well. And then our ghost note for this bar, you just lift your index finger and hit the open fifth string. When we get to our third bar, we go to an E minor chord shape. Now let's break this up into two parts. Our first part, we're just plucking from the sixth string to the second string. And then for our second half, we're gonna pluck the fourth string. And then our pinky finger will come down onto the third fret of the second string, hit that, and then end on the third string. And all together for the E minor. For our fourth bar, we're going to go to an A7 chord shape. So from the E minor, just keep your middle finger where it is and your ring finger will come down onto the second fret of the second string. Now this bar is one of the exceptions where you can take your index finger and actually move it to the fourth string to pluck. So we're going to be hitting the fifth, fourth and second strings all together with this A7 chord shape. And then you're going to go back to the bass note and then we're going to slide our middle finger up and your index finger goes onto the third fret of the second string and your middle is now on the fourth fret. Pluck those two with your index and middle back to the bass note then slide this middle finger up one fret so it's now on the fifth and your ring finger comes onto the fifth fret of the second string. Pluck those two strings back to the bass note and then return back to our A7 position and pluck those two notes. So between each position, we're constantly alternating between those notes and then the bass string. So it'll sound like this all together. Now for the second line of tab, the first two bars are exactly the same. When we get to our third bar, this is where things differ a little bit. Now we're gonna play a G6 chord and to play that looks like this. So your index finger is gonna bar the fifth fret from the fourth string onwards and then your ring finger goes onto the seventh fret of the third string, pinky finger on the seventh fret of the first string. We're gonna pinch the fourth and first string together and then third, second, third. And that's it for the G6. For our next chord shape, it's a variation of a D slash F sharp. 
pinky finger just slides down to the fifth fret, index finger on the third fret of the second string, and middle finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string. So we're going to start by pinching the fourth and first string, then play the second string, lift your pinky, hit the open first string, and then back to second. So for the D slash F sharp. And all together for that bar. And then for our final bar, we're going to go to an E major chord shape. You're going to strum that. Now what I like to do with these strums, and I think this is what Brian does as well, is he uses the edge of his fingernail to sort of rake across the strings. Now you can't just use your thumb and strum down like that, but by using the side of your fingernail, you get that crisp sound similar to a guitar pick. Then after that, you're gonna hit the open sixth string just with your thumb. And then we're gonna change positions here. So keep your index and ring finger on the same strings. We're just gonna slide them up to the second and fourth. With your free middle finger here, you just wanna lightly touch the fifth string so it's muted. Now this is our second chord shape and we're gonna strum that. Then we're gonna go back to the open bass string, slide this up two frets, strum that chord hit the open bass string again, and then slide this up to ninth and seventh, same shape, and end on that chord. Now again, it is really important that you don't hit the fifth string, just mute that with your middle finger, and all together for this final bar. And that's everything for the intro, so all together the intro will sound like this. Next we get to verse number one and there's three lines of tab here. So we're going to start with an A major chord, but we're gonna play that with our middle ring and pinky finger like this. You're gonna need your index finger here ready to go on the first fret of the third string. Now what we're gonna do is use our thumb to glide across the fifth and fourth strings and then end by plucking the third string by itself. So, but that's all in one sort of smooth raking motion like that. But if you can't do that, then you can just pinch the bass note and the third string together to start this off. But I think it sounds nicer to sort of glide across those strings. Then after that, you're gonna lift your ring finger, hit the first fret of the third string, then put your ring finger back down, and then hit the open first string. So the first four plucks. And then the last four plucks is just the third string, second string, third, and back to fourth. So all together for the A. And then we're going to go to an F sharp minor bar chord, and we're going to pluck the bass note, fifth string, then third string, fourth string, second string, third string, and then first string, second string. So all together for the F sharp minor. Then we go to a B minor bar chord, and we're gonna pinch the bass note, the third and second strings together. Lift your middle finger, hit the second fret, then put it back down, and then hit the first string. So the first four plucks. And then the second four plucks, we just have the third string, second, third, and fourth. Then we're gonna to go to an E major chord, and we're basically gonna play a similar thing that we did in the intro with the E major, where we strum the strings, hit the bass note, and move chord shapes. The only difference here is that instead of our last chord being up here at the ninth and seventh frets, we're just gonna go back down and end on our E major chord. So in total for this bar,
So in total for the first line of tab, we have this. For our second line of tab, we go to an A chord, except this time we're going to play it with our index, middle and ring finger. You're going to pinch the bass note, second and third strings, lift your ring finger, hit the open second string, then hit the third string, and then we're going to change positions to an F sharp minor slash G. Now this is going to be a bit of a stretch and might challenge some of the beginners, but basically you need to bar the second fret from the third, second and first strings. The pinky finger will go at the 5th fret of the 4th string and we're going to pinch all those strings together. Now if you're struggling with getting that pinky all the way there, you can just bar your next finger across the 2nd fret and pluck 3rd, 2nd and 1st strings like that. After that you'll lift everything, hit the open 1st string and then get into a D position and hit the 2nd fret of the 1st string. So all together for that bar. Then we go to a D chord and we're just pinching the bass note and first string together. Third string, second string, third string and end on the first string. For our next bar we're going to a B minor and we're just going to strum this and then mute it quickly after. Don't let it ring out. So this is where he says take it back, take it back. And then we go to an F sharp minor, do the exact same thing. Then for our fourth bar, we'll go to a G chord. We're pinching the bass note, third and second strings together. With your index finger, take that down to the second fret of the second string. Lift that, hit the open second string, and then end by pinching the bass note, third and second strings. So those first four plucks. Then we end with two strums on the D chord. And that's it for that final bar. So in total, the second line of tab sounds like this. For our third line of tab, we're gonna start off by strumming some chords here. So we have our G, we're just gonna strum that once. Then we go to a D, then we go to a B minor, and then E minor, hold that out for two beats, and then an A chord for two more beats. So those first two bars will sound like this. For our third bar, we go to a D chord, we're hitting the fourth string, third, second, third, and then you're going to quickly go up to this position, so middle and ring finger on the 7th fret of the 3rd and 1st strings. You're going to pluck those two strings together, then hit the open 4th string. Slide your middle finger down and your index finger will play the 5th fret of the 1st string. Pinch those two notes, bass note, and then take this exact same shape down 2 frets to 3rd and 4th. Hit that and slide up 2 frets. And then you're going to end by sliding your middle finger down to the second fret. Ring finger goes on the second fret of the first string. And hit those two notes. So in total for this last section. And that's everything for verse number one. So in total it'll sound like this.
After that first verse, we have a break section, and it's just the last two bars of our intro, which we already have learned. Next we get to verse 2, and verse 2 is identical to verse number 1, with the exception of the very last bar. Now the very last bar is a D chord still, but we're going to actually play a D sus 2, so lift your middle finger, we're going to pluck the 4th string, 3rd string, 2nd string, 3rd string, and then hit the open 1st string, back to 3rd, and then put your middle finger down, and end with that 1st string. So the very last bar for verse number two sounds like this. Everything else for the verse is the same as verse number one, so nothing new to learn there. Next we move on to the bridge of the song. And we're going to start this with the B minor chord, we're just going to strum that and hold that out for a bar. Then we have an F sharp minor, strum that for one bar. And then we go to a G and we're going to pluck the bass note. 4th, 3rd, 4th, 2nd, 3rd, and then 1st and 2nd strings. Then we go to a D chord, we're going to pinch the bass note, 1st and 2nd strings, back to the bass note, which is the 4th string. Then you're going to slide your ring finger up to the 5th fret, your index finger will hit the 3rd fret of the 1st string. We'll pluck these 2 strings and slide it up 2 frets. And then pluck these 2 strings again. And then go to an F sharp major chord, so not a minor. And strum that. So in total for this final bar. And in total for the first line of tab. Our second line of tab we go to a B minor, but now we're going to pick it, so 5th, 4th, 3rd and back to 4th string for our first 4 notes, and then 2nd, 3rd, 1st, 2nd strings. So for the B minor. For our F sharp minor we're just hitting the 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd and ending on the 1st string and holding that out. Moving on to our third bar, we have a D sharp diminished here. So this is a bit of a weird chord shape. So your index finger will go on to the first fret of the fourth string, and then the rest of your fingers will go on to the second frets of the other strings. We're going to pinch all of those strings together, then mute shortly after, and then change our shape to this. So your index and pinky finger stay exactly where they are, but your ring finger will now come up to the second fret of the third string and your middle finger will go on to the first fret of the second string. We'll pinch all those strings again and then for our final shape lift your middle finger and pinch all those strings again. So all together for this third bar. For the final bar we're ending with an E minor and we're plucking the sixth, fifth, fourth, third and first strings. And then you'll take your pinky finger, put it onto the 3rd fret of the 2nd string, hit the 3rd string, 2nd, and back to 3rd string. So in total for the E minor. And all together for the 2nd line of tab. For our third line of tab, this next bar is very similar to what we have in our intro where we had that A7 chord and we moved shapes and alternated between the bass note. The only difference here though is that instead of ending back on our A7, we're going to end on an A7 all the way up here, an octave higher. So your ring and pinky finger will go onto the 14th frets of the 4th and 2nd string and your index finger will play the 12th fret of the 3rd string. And what I like to do with this chord is I'll just strum it with my thumb. So in total for this bar, it will sound like this. And all together for the bridge.
Next, we get to the instrumental section. And sometimes Brian May chooses not to play this part, but in the video I've linked down below, he does play this section. And it sounds really great. It is a little challenging though, so the beginners out there might have a little difficulty, but I would suggest you give it a shot. So to start off this instrumental section, we'll need our index finger on the fifth fret of the first string and your ring and pinky finger will go onto the seventh fret of the third and second strings. Now let's break this bar up into two sections. For our first four plucks, we'll pluck the open fourth string, then the first string, then third and second. And then for our second four plucks, we'll change position. So your, so your middle finger will come down on the sixth fret of the third string. You'll lift your ring finger and we're going to pluck the third, second, first, and back to second strings. And that picking pattern in total. Now for this first line of tab, we're just gonna repeat that bar four times. For the final time we play it though, there's one little variation. Instead of going back to the second string, we're going back to the third string and then you'll hammer on from the 6th fret to the 7th fret with your ring finger. So that final time that it's played sounds like this. And in total for that first line of tab. We'll move on to the second line of tab. Now, this is a tricky part of the song. So you're going to take your index finger, fifth fret of the fifth string. Your ring and pinky finger will go on to the seventh frets of the fourth and second strings. We're going to start by pinching the fifth and second strings together, fourth string, and then second string by itself. So it'll sound like this. From here on out, the picking pattern is going to be very consistent. So we're always going to pinch the fifth and second strings together and then alternate that with a fourth string pluck. So our next shape, we'll slide our index finger down. Our pinky finger will come down onto the seventh fret of the fourth string and your middle finger will hit the fifth fret of the second string. So again, pinch the fifth and second strings and then hit the fourth string. That's the typical picking pattern that we'll use here on out. Then we go back to our original shape, back to that stretchy shape, back to our original shape. Then we'll move this whole shape up two frets, except now your middle finger will hit the eighth fret of the second string. Back to our original shape. And so far we have this. For our third bar, we'll go down to the stretchy shape. Then we'll go to a G slash B shape. So your next finger on the second fret of the fifth, ring finger on the third fret of the second string. We're gonna pinch the fifth and second strings and then hit the open first string. And then we'll go to an A chord and we'll pinch the fifth and second strings. Hit the fourth string. And then your pinky finger will come onto the fifth fret of the first string. Hit that second string and first string again. So for the last section. And in total for this line. move on to the third line of tabs for this instrumental section. We're going to play an A minor 7 chord shape, except your pinky will be on the 3rd fret of the 1st string as well. We're going to pinch the bass note, 3rd, 2nd and 1st strings all together. And hit the 3rd string, 2nd string. Then your ring finger will come down onto the 2nd fret of the 1st string. So all together. And we play a G chord, except don't put your ring finger down on the third fret of the second string, leave that open. We're pinching the bass note, third, second, and first strings all together. 
then go third, second, first strings. Keep your pinky finger where it is and let that note ring out. Because your index finger will now come down onto the first fret of the second string. We're going to pluck that second string, then first string, ring finger on the third fret of the second string, lift that back to the first fret, and then go back to our G chord shape and pinch the bass note third and second strings. So all together for this G chord, And then we're going to end this section by taking our ring finger, or any finger really, and just barring it across the 12th fret. Now you're going to do some harmonics here, so don't actually push the strings down. You'll just lightly touch the strings, and you'll need to hover it above the metal strip separating 12th and 13th fret. So over that metal strip, and we'll just pluck the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings. And that's how we play those harmonics. Don't push the strings down. Remember, you're just lightly touching them over that metal strip. And in total for this third line of tab. Let's move on to our fourth line of tab. We'll start with a shape up here. So middle finger on the 11th fret of the third string index finger on the 10th fret of the first string. Pluck those two strings and then hit the open fourth string. We're going to slide our middle finger down to the 9th fret and ring finger comes onto the 9th fret of the first string. Pluck those two notes, hit the bass note. We're going to slide this shape down two frets, pluck them and slide them up two frets. And then we'll end with our middle finger on 6th fret, index finger on 5th fret. And we'll pinch the open 4th string, 3rd and 1st string. Now all together for that bar. And for the rest of this line of tab, we're just playing the G6 to the D slash F sharp. And we've learnt that previously in the song, but we need to play that bar three times. For our final and fifth line of tab for this instrumental, we'll start with our E chord and this is where we're strumming the E chord, hitting the bass note and then changing shapes. So it's that bar we had in the intro which sounds like this. And then for our next bar we go to our A7 and we're doing essentially the same thing but with the A7 shape. Then this shape, so 4th fret and 3rd fret and then this 5th fret shape and then taking that up to ninth and 8th of the 4th and 2nd strings. So essentially the same thing but we're starting with the A7. And then total for the final line of tab. And altogether, the instrumental will sound like this.
finally we get to the outro and a lot of this is very similar to what we have in the verses so we're actually starting with that B minor chord shape where we're just strumming it and muting it shortly after and we do the same to the F sharp minor and the next three bars we already know When we get to the D, this is where things differ a little bit. So we'll play our D chord shape. We'll pluck fourth string, third, second, and third string. And you'll quickly slide up to the 10th fret of the first and second string with your ring and pinky finger. Pluck those two strings, bass note, and then slide all the way up to the 14th and 15th fret. And basically play a D chord shape. And we're gonna pluck those top two strings again. So all together for the D. For the final line of tab, we have a B minor. We're pinching the bass note, third and second strings. Then you'll pluck the fourth, third and first string and hold that out. Then we'll go to a F sharp minor and do the exact same thing, but our bass note is the sixth string here. And then we'll go to an E minor seven chord shape. You will pinch the bass note, third and second strings together, fourth and third string, and then with your index finger, hit the second fret of the sixth string. So those first four plucks. Then you're gonna slide your index finger up one fret. Now this index finger is gonna bar the whole third fret, and your pinky is coming up to the sixth fret of the first string. You'll pinch the 6th string, 3rd, 2nd and 1st strings all together. Back to bass note. And then ring finger comes down to the 5th fret of the 1st string. And we'll hit the top 3 strings. So all together for this G minor. And in total for this 3rd bar. And to end this song, we're going to a D chord, you'll pinch the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings together, then the bass note by itself, slide your ring finger up to the 7th fret and your middle finger will come onto that 7th fret as well, we'll pluck those two strings back to the bass note, then slide your ring finger up to the 10th fret, pinky will come down onto the 10th fret of the 1st string, pluck those two strings and then bass note and then end on this D chord an octave up on the 14th and 15th strings. And we'll end by just pinching all those strings together or you can strum them if you like. So the final bar. And everything in total for the outro. So there you have it guys, this is everything for the acoustic version of Love of My Life. It's such a fun piece to play. You don't even need the vocals, you can just play it by itself and it sounds amazing. Now when you do play this, don't be afraid to add some dynamic. So slow down some parts, you can speed up other parts. And this is how Brian May does it. He always mixes it up every time he plays it live. So now I'll be playing the full song in its entirety. I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. So feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed this. Be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to take your guitar to the next level, then check out Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. As always, it would mean the world if you could hit that like button, hit subscribe, and click the little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on my updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions, and requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.